Hi everybody and welcome to today's LEGO Technic video. I'm really excited to present to you my latest piece of work. Uh, it is a gearing ratio calculator or, or simulator. And the motivation for this project uh, was to do with some of my designs that I've built in the past. And, and typically what I do, I will first create them in a tool uh, like studio.io. Uh, uh, there's lots of other tools out there, but this is one of my uh, favorites. And the problem I was trying to solve was the fact that even after I've designed my, you know, my model uh, within Studio, it's, it's quite often hard to visualize whether or not you got all the gearing correct. So in this particular example, this is uh, one of my Pi Day uh, designs, and the idea of this design was to create a gearing ratio of Pi, or an approximation between the input on the right here, and the output on the left. So the idea was just to approximate, you know, with this gearing device, two differentials, um, you know, a gearing ratio of uh, 3.1415. Now, of course, you can't create pi exactly, so at that time I created a fraction that was close to pi, and that fraction was 355 over 113. So I was trying to create a gearing ratio of 355 over 113 between input and output. And even though I designed this on paper and spent a lot of time designing it and thinking about it, even when I designed it and built it, it's still hard to tell whether or not that gearing ratio was correct. Um, sometimes you can make a very simple mistake in terms of the directions of the gears um, and things like that, especially with differentials, and I might have got it wrong. And even though I built it, it did seem to be uh, pretty close to, to pi or 3.14, but you can never tell exactly. So the motivation uh, for this particular tool that I've designed is to validate and verify whether or not those gearing ratios that I've designed are in fact correct before I go to the effort of actually building the model. So that is what I'm going to be presenting to you today. All right, so the first thing I have to do for my tool design is to choose what technology to use. Uh, so I decided to use just simply a web application that's just JavaScript, uh, just to make it easier for everyone to be able to access it, rather than having to create, for example, a Windows executable or Mac OS or Linux. Uh, and part of that, of course, I had to create a website to be able to distribute that. So I've created a Technic brickpower.com website. The idea of that website is to pretty much host the tools, but I'll probably, I've probably also put some of my videos on there and some FAQ questions and things like that. So we'll just go to that website. Uh, just need to go to your browser, type in technicbrickpower.com. That will bring up my new website. Here it is. Um, again, like I said, it mainly just contains uh, some of my videos and things like that. Um, but also I've created a tools section and the idea is, is that maybe in future I'll create some other tools as well. But for now I've got my gearing ratio calculator so all you need to do is click on this uh, window here and that will load up uh, the application. So as you can see it just comes up with an intro like that and the first thing you have to do is load your .ldr file. An LDR file is a uh, Lego draw file. And um, you know, most applications support that. So in Studio, uh, the native format is a .io file that contains uh, you know, the model and other things like instructions and things like that. So first thing you need to do is export your uh, project as an LDRAW file. So just do that there. We'll just export there like that. I'll just go back to my application for the gearing ratio calculation. I'll just open up that file, pydayDiff open that up and that will load it into the tool and there it is. So this tool you can kind of see the model like that. Uh, now of course it's only loaded the relevant parts for the gearing calculation. It only really knows about uh, gears, axles uh, and differentials and, and other components that can actually be driven. So all the um, you know the lift arms and things like that are all uh, not shown. Uh, the top right here shows you the frame rate, it's about 57 frames per second so that's really nice. Uh, you can rotate the model like that and get a good view of it, and zoom in and out, things like that. And uh, so part of the idea is, is to be able to calculate the gearing ratios between the input and output. So on the left here, uh, this is the input, and on the right there, that's the output. In fact, I'll just turn it around to match the way I had it in the studio. Uh, so this is my input. So what I can do, I've got uh, various motors here, and you can connect a motor to one of those inputs and see the effects of that uh, being animated. So I just connect, for example, this motor, what you do, you can select different motors, uh, set their speed. Uh, the idea of the multiple motors is just so you can connect uh, more than one motor if your model has got more than one um, kind of a gearing path. So what you do, you click on the gear and that will start flashing and now that means you can now connect 
to a uh, any piece and so I'll just drive this axle there and look at that it now simulates the entire gearing system you can now easily see how quickly things are going you can change you know the input speed and go backwards uh, go forwards and then at the bottom left here it shows you some information about in particular gear that you're hovering over so I can hover over some of the parts and I'll just slow it down a little bit so I can for example hover over the input you can see at the bottom left here it's driven by motor 1 it's got a speed of 14 rpm which is equal to the rpm I've set for the speed of the motor uh, and you can hover over any part and see those gearing ratios so now what I really want to know is whether or not the output in fact is the gearing ratio that I'm after so by clicking on that output hovering on the output if I can just click on it and highlight it and it'll just stay there you can see that uh, the ratio is correct it's 355 over 113 so that shows you that uh, I have in fact got the gearing ratios correct uh, but like I said it's very easy to get it wrong and the great thing about this tool allows you to validate the fact that your gearing ratios are correct and as expected uh, you can highlight particular parts like you might be interested in that differential you can click the wee pin and that will just pin it um, to the output display there um, yeah, you can zoom in and out. Now there are some parts that aren't being used. So, for example, some of these axles were used for the uh, support of the framing. So I can just uh, hide them using this icon here. So that just shows you all the components that are moving. Um, I can uh, drive another part. So, for example, I can drive it backwards. Uh, now, of course, I'm now driving the output and looking at the input. Now I'm going to see the opposite ratio of uh, minus 113 over 355 that's just the inverse uh, so yes yeah, so this validates that the pi day differential does in fact work correctly uh, we can still see we've got a very good frame rate 57 frames per second uh, and i'll now show you the next model i can disconnect uh, the motor just by clicking like that okay i'll just show you one of the other projects that i've used this tool for uh, so that is my omnidirectional vehicle i'll just go over to that uh, i'll just open that project within studio there it is omnidirectional vehicle so this particular project uh, is a video I presented not long ago uh, the idea of this model is that you can drive forwards and backwards and rotate on the spot by rotating the uh, wheels in a particular direction now the Probably the tricky part of this model is that some of these wheels had to rotate clockwise and the other ones anti-clockwise and having a different gearing ratio between those wheel rotations um, like or between of one to three so you have to watch the video to understand that but I'll just show you how this works so again we have to export this as an LDRAW file just like that we go back to our gearing calculator and in this case we will go and load that up Omnidirectional vehicle LDR. There it is. It loads now. It loads very quickly because some of the files have been caged in the browser. Uh, first time you do use the tool, it will uh, load up a little bit more slowly. You can see this particular model is um, a lot more complex, got a lot more gears, and the frame rate is about 30 frames per second. And that, of course, will depend on your computer and your browser and things like that. Uh, so in this particular model, I've got two motors: one to turn the wheels, or you know, to drive the actual model itself that will rotate uh, these bottom wheels uh, that is driven by this uh, yellow axle up here and the other motor drives the turning of the wheels or rotation or to change directions so first I'll just show you uh, motor one so I click the gear there connect that to the input and that will calculate and start driving the model so that allows me to see straight away that all the wheels are going in the correct directions they're all going either clockwise together or I can change directions and make them go forward like that uh, and at the same time I can also see the gearing ratio between the input motor and any one of the wheels but so I click on that component I can see that it's being driven by motor 1 and it's got a ratio of 3 to 25 of course all of them will have that same ratio 3 to 25 uh, and as like I said you can see they're all going in the uh, correct directions so I can now also uh, connect motor 2 to the rotation part so the rotation uh, axle was here it's kind of been made translucent because it's not being used but you can still see it uh, so I can connect motor 2 to that component uh, and that will start rotating those turntables so we can now also see that the uh, turntable components are rotating now, of course the model uh, or the simulator doesn't know anything about turntable connections on the other parts so the actual wheels aren't rotating 
but this just simply shows you again the gearing ratio between that input and those uh, turntable components so in this case here we've got a gearing ratio of 1 to 140 so it's very slow we've got that worm gear in there slowing that down but the main thing I want to make sure is that one for example is a three times as fast so you can see there that's 3 to 140 so that's triple the speed of the other one uh, now of course uh, with the worm gear simulation as well uh, you can only drive worm gears in one direction so for example if I try to drive uh, this axle here which is all this uh, gear onto the worm gear it will uh, flash red like this because I've actually created uh, I guess the gear jamming you can't uh, you know drive this gear and then drive a worm gear worm gear is only a one directional set again shows you uh, you know whether or not you've got any sort of gearing inconsistencies or jamming uh, because in this case uh, you, you can't drive that worm gear backwards so I can only drive it forwards and again by clicking the um, hide unused parts button it just clarifies the whole model a little bit and just removes all those components that aren't being driven they, that are used for framing which of course the model doesn't know about until you start uh, actually uh, animating and driving and the components Okay, so that is the omnidirectional vehicle simulation. Um, again, the frame rate's a little bit slower, but it's still sufficient to be able to see uh, kind of what's going on. It's uh, been very useful just to validate this particular model. And I'll now show you my third and final model as a demonstration. Just one moment. All right, so the other model I wanted to show you was one of the designs I did a while ago of a Ferrari gearbox simulation. So I'll just go back to Studio load that file so I just open that particular model Ferrari gearbox Now the idea of this gearbox here is it's trying to uh, create a manual version of a Ferrari automatic gearbox it's got eight different gears seven forward gears and one reverse gear and the idea was is that each of these manual gears as closely as possible simulated uh, or approximated each of the automatic gearbox gearing ratios so I had to create uh, eight different ratios and again it's always hard to get those exactly correct um, because you know it can get complicated when you're doing these designs and uh, you can get a bit lost in the number of gears that you end up with so again I'll just export this file into our draw format uh, we'll go back to the gearing simulator I will just load up that Ferrari gearbox and it's got 168 parts they've all been loaded here is the model uh, just kind of zoom in and again it's removed a lot of the components that it doesn't support so in this case it doesn't support uh, some of the engine piston components uh, and things like that it doesn't support chains but uh, again it supports the majority of the components that are required uh, or sufficient to, be able to simulate uh, what we're after so in this particular model the inputs down here that is where that's the axle that the motor drives and here is the output so what I'll do first is the output I will just highlight or click on that and then I'll pin it so that way uh, I won't lose track of it I can easily see uh, what uh, the what that value is of the output relative to the input now this particular model has got the four different driving rings uh, now I do support switching driving rings so you can just uh, select a driving ring that will then in the user interface bring the switch button that allows me to switch the driving ring into different positions so in this case uh, the first gear the driving ring has to be I think at the bottom like that because the first gear uh, with the lever goes forward so it actually drives the ring backwards and that should create the first gear so what I'll do I'll connect the motor to the input um, oh, actually wrong one connect the motor to this input that was the action in fact the output uh, and now it's now simulating the whole gearing system so we can see the output gear has got a gearing ratio of three tenths or in this case minus three tenths is going in the opposite direction to the input um, and yeah so that is correct that is the correct first gear if I want to go to the second gear I have to switch that uh, driving ring um, like that I'll push switch and then that will go back to neutral and then it will go into second gear so now we can see that the second gear output is four ninths instead of three tenths so that is the correct second gear you'll have to watch the video to see all the gearing ratios that I created uh, but again uh, using the simulation tool I can go through each of those gears and find out whether or not I got the design correct. It's actually interesting because I actually did end up discovering that I made a mistake I think in the uh, gear number six instead of being um, the correct amount of eight seventh it actually turns out, so that's that one there, it turns out the gearing ratio I ended up having instead of eight sevenths I ended up with uh, seven over eight so I actually got those gears backwards 
So in that respect, the tool has been useful. It's only in hindsight. I actually built this tool after I created this particular gearbox. But it did tell me that I actually got the gearing for one of the gearing ratios backwards. So I um, guess at the time I was designing it, I had to drive it from the uh, driving axles to the um, driving rings. But in fact, uh, at the time I got it backwards and went the other way. So that was a mistake I discovered in this particular design that gear number six was incorrect. Now, of course, with these uh, driving rings, if you connect two of them at the same time, you will create a conflict. So by doing that, uh, for example, it'll show you that you can't drive the whole model uh, with two driving rings activated at the same time as that will create a gearing jam. So again, you've got to make sure that uh, the driving rings are all uh, connected the right way. By disconnecting that one, we go back to gear number one. So again, that is that three tenths. Uh, if we go to the reverse gear, which is the last uh, switch, which is over here, um, then in fact it should be in this direction. We can see that this is now a reverse gear rather than a forward gear. All right, so that summarizes my gearing ratio calculation or simulation tool. Um, I found it very useful. Again, we can uh, remove some of the unused components and get a really good view of what you've designed. Hope you enjoy this tool, Make get some use out of it. Please give me some feedback whether or not you do find it useful. Like I said, I found it useful, so please try it out. Um, yeah, please like and subscribe, and see you next time. Bye.